Ernest, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Great, happy to hear it. Uh, from, congratulations on the movie, first oh, of all. Thank you so much. Uh, big fan. Uh, big fan of the book as well. Um, oh, and obviously you're a big fan of Spielberg, so we're going to jump right into the, the difficult one. Sure. Favourite Spielberg moment? Oh, you know, um, one of my favourite Spielberg moments, uh, and you can see echoes of it in a lot of his films, but uh, is in the movie E.T., which uh, uh, was my favourite movie when it came out. Uh, it hit me really hard. I was the same age as Elliot, and... Uh, and I already become interested in life on other worlds and science fiction, uh, partly because of Close Encounters a few years before. And, uh, uh, and um, I was a child of divorce uh, as well, and watching Elliot uh, you know, work through that, and there's this scene in uh, E.T. where Elliot is, uh, had a fight with his mother, and he's at the kitchen sink, and there's steam rising from the sink, and he's looking out uh, the window and kind of dreaming of a better life. And uh, that moment, uh, uh, always speaks to me when I watch the film, and there's a moment just like that in Ready Player One when Wade is in his uh, uh, aunt's trailer and he's laying on top of the washer dryer and he's looking out the window at the stacks, uh, this you know grim uh, place that he's growing up and dreaming of adventure and escape. And uh, you know that's a theme that runs through a lot of Stephen's uh, stories and helped inspire me to you know write Ready Player One. You know I think of. Uh, Wade Watts as being like Elliot in E.T. or Mikey in The Goonies, you know, that kind of young, pure of heart uh, protagonist. Um, and having read the book and then co-wrote the screenplay, how difficult was it for you to disassociate, I guess, from, from uh, there must have been a lot of parts of the book that you absolutely loved. Yeah. And then you were like, That's, I have to leave you behind <laughs> now for the screenplay. Was, yes. was that easy for you? Or were you like, but I really want this bit and you had to be yeah. talked down? Uh, well, you know, I never, you know, because I uh, wrote a few drafts of the screenplay myself uh, before Zach or Steven came on board, uh, you know, and I wrote my drafts before the book was even published. So it had not become a bestseller yet and uh, uh, much less an international bestseller. So I didn't have quite as much leverage uh, when I was to keep things the same as in the book when I was working on the script. But even uh, during that period, I could see uh, that, that serious changes would have to be made because of the set pieces I had created in my book, which I had assumed could never be a movie, sure. uh, uh, were all very static. And a lot of characters uh, sitting uh, in, uh, standing in front of a classic arcade game for hours or uh, reenacting an old Dungeons and Dragons module, things that work great in the book but would not be cinematic or work in the movie. So I knew those things would have to be reworked and and uh, and started to rework them myself. You know, like the idea of a race uh, came from a discussion uh, with uh, one of the producers about how do we get a video game challenge that's more cinematic but still captures the spirit of what's in the book uh, and the video. You know, so like a Super Mario Kart 2045 kind of race with all the different vehicles that you can have in the Oasis commanded by all the different avatars. It really sets up the world and the potential of the world uh, in a way that still captures the spirit of the book. And there's still an Easter egg in that uh, uh, race that has to be found and one that uh, Wade finds by studying uh, James Halliday's life. So I feel like even though it's different, it still very much captures the spirit uh, of the book. Like the second challenge of going into a movie, it's a different movie that we go into in the in the books, but uh, uh, a um, you know, much better choice for the movie because it's a much more visual uh, environment and a surprise even for readers of the book. So I'm, you know, uh, I'm happy with all those changes because I got to help make all of them. And you mentioned Easter eggs there. You've probably been asked this a million times already, but for a film so packed with them, will, do you reckon there is ever a chance that someone will have found them all? Or <laughs> is, there, is there like an Easter egg hidden so well in the movie that you like no one... Will ever find that oh, one. Oh, you know, there might be uh, in the New York race scene because, you know, so much of that, uh, you know, I think we may have built uh, uh, Easter eggs into that environment that don't even make it onto the screen because they're, you know, we ended up cutting those shots or whatever. But I know that uh, ILM and Digital Domain, uh, uh, who did the Oasis and the real world special effects, both those effects. Uh, houses hid Easter eggs in the movie without oh, wow. telling, <laughs> without telling us. Uh, it's like Stephen uh, mentioned in Austin uh, uh, at the premiere that uh, he was doing his final run through and spotted a gremlin uh, that somebody had put in the movie <laughs> without his permission, and he said, oh, "All right, it was okay." But I mean, that was there was a lot of that, and Zach and I kind of uh, uh, cramming as much uh, stuff into the picture. So I think, but once the Blu-ray comes out, people are going to be 
studying it like the Zabruder film, frame yeah, by frame. Like, yeah, yeah, literally frame by frame. Like, yeah. And everyone watching it will have no idea what's going to come up. <laughs> like, oh, here's another one. I know. Well, that's part of the fun of it. But what Stephen uh, uh, says over and over again is that the Easter eggs and the pop culture stuff is in the side view mirrors, and you can kind of look left and right and, and take a look at them. But if you look straight ahead, it's always the story and the characters and the adventure. Fantastic. Ernest, uh-huh. thank you so much. Oh, uh-huh. Thank you, man. Thanks. Like many of you, I only came here to escape. But I found something much bigger than just myself. Are you willing to fight? Help us save the Oasis.